If you are guests in this place, if you are here, a first time visitor, welcome. We are not a, a church that settles for ordinary worship and ordinary praise. We are a church that is called by God to bring God's kids back home. We are not a church that's going to negotiate with the devil. No. The Bible says Jesus Christ was anointed by God, healing all those oppressed by the devil. All, not some, all, for God was with him. And I believe this morning as you sit here, I, we are, I am confident of this fact that God is with me. Oh, no, 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 no. I, let me talk to this side of the church maybe. I am confident of this fact that God is for me. I'm confident of the fact that I'm the head and not the tail. I'm confident of the fact that I'm anointed by God. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me. Can you say that this morning? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. To do what? To heal the sick. To do what? To preach the gospel to those that have not received it. To do what? To set the captives free because the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Come on, do I have people here this morning that can say that with confidence that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is within me. Come on, empower. And so I want to speak to you this morning about no agreement with the devil. No, absolutely no agreement with the devil. It is time that we break every form of allegiance that we might have. Are you guys there? And again, as you guys are on here this morning, let me know where you're watching from, guys. Please let me know. Comment, comment, comment. I want to see. I want to speak to you about something that the Lord has been dealing with me heavily about and something that I'm seeing in this hour. And Father, I pray right now that every ear might hear the word of the Lord. Father, I pray against every spirit of destruction in this place. Father, I come against every spirit that wants to rob the words of Christ as I speak them now. Father, I come against every deceitful spirit, the Lord, that has come to steal the word of the Lord. Father, I pray for every spirit to be opened right now to receive the word of the Lord, Ephesians 1, 17 to 19. I pray for open ears and open hearts in this place right now in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that right now that the word of the Lord will go forth like a double-edged sword and cut through bone, marrow, thoughts, intentions. Father, I pray that right now that the hearts and the understanding of man in this place will be open to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. The Bible says in James chapter number 1, verse number 22, but be doers of the word. Please note this. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So right from the bat, we see in John to James chapter 1, verse number 22, James makes a very clear distinction. Those that hear the word and those that do the word. We are in a season where many might hear the word, but if you don't do the word, you are already deceived. Can I say that again? Come on, guys. You can hear the word. I can preach the word to you this morning. But if you don't do the word of the Lord, you are in deception. Jesus makes it very clear in Matthew 24, verse number 4. He says this, he makes a very clear statement. He says, and he answered and said to them, he said, make sure that no man deceives you. Make no, let no man deceive you. Now the word deceive you, the word deception is the Greek word plano. And it means to depart from that that is an absolute truth. To that that is accommodating the things of this world. I want to make it very clear that the things of this world is passing by. But there's a kingdom that will not pass by. And that kingdom has got a government. And that government rests upon the shoulders of a man. His name is Jesus Christ. Are you with me? And on his shoulders will rest the government. And to that government, there will be no end. That government will be so strong that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. And so the Bible says, Jesus says, take hold that no man deceives you. We are stepping and we are already there where there are the spirit of deception is one of the strongest things that is busy happening right now because people are departing away from that that is an absolute truth. I want you to understand the Bible is an absolute truth. 
Jesus is an absolute truth. There isn't another way but Jesus. He's not a son, he's the son. He's not a begotten, he's the begotten. He's not a way, he's the only way. The Hare Krishna is not a way to God. Buddha is not a way to God. There's only one way, his name is Jesus. Now you can ask the question, who's Jesus? Well, there's 66 books in your Bible. 39 of those books in the Old Testament prophesies about him. On the book, the first book of your New Testament, the book of Matthew, he appears on the scene. Jesus, the Son of God, He came to dwell amongst men. Why? To save man. And I don't have time to, to give you the redemption thing, but I, I want you to understand this morning very, very simply that the, the part of the word that you don't apply is the place that deception will happen. And I'm going to prove it to you this morning. Are you there? And so in this church, we are good, good Bereans, we love the word of the Lord. So I want to prove to you out of scripture. Can we go to scripture, please? And I want to take you all the way back to the Garden of Eden where it happened. And how that spirit is still running rampant right now. You see, God says to Adam and Eve, He says this, But of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat. That's God's commandment. Eve, when the serpent comes in, when the snake comes in, she says the following. She says, you must not eat from the tree that's in the middle of the garden. So right here we already see that Eve is busy misquoting the word of God. Can I say that again that everybody can catch it? God gives dominion to Adam, right? He gives dominion to Adam. He says, Adam, rule over the things of this, uh, rule over the earth. Have dominion, multiply, subdue. Then the Bible says the snake comes in, Satan comes in, because he's already been cast down as Lucifer, he's now Satan. Satan is not a name, it is a title, it's a word bar satan, it simply means prince or the accuser. And then he has another name, the word diabolos, which is the word that means, the word dia means to penetrate, the word balor means to throw. And if you put these two things together, it is a job description, not a name. It's something that He does. He gives you thoughts. He gives you accusations. Are you there? He gives you negative things into your heart, into your mind, into your spirit. He needs to tell you something contrary to what God has done. And the way He does that is sometimes through the Word. And what He does here, He comes to Eve and He speaks to Eve. Because just before the snake speaks to Eve, and I want you to understand this very clearly, before the snake speaks or before Satan speaks to Eve, God has already spoken. You see, God has already, and listen to what the Bible says. I want your ears to hear this morning. But of the fruit of the tree of knowledge and good and evil thou shalt not eat. That's what God is saying. Eve quotes God. She says, you must not eat from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. So Eve completely misquotes the command of God. She's referring to the tree of life where God is referring to the tree of knowledge. But then listen to this second part. Then God tells her them, for in the day you eat thereof, you shall surely die. In other words, God says, if you eat of that tree, you will die. Right? Listen to what Eve says. You must not eat from the fruit that is, Eve says, you must not eat from the fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. Now she takes it a little further. Oh, sorry, my apologies. For, God says, for in the day you eat thereof, you shall surely die. Eve says, and if you touch it, you will die. In other words, God says, if you eat of it, Eve says, if you touch it. What is busy happening here? I started off the sermon by J James chapter 1 verse number 22. Why I said to you, if you hear the word and you don't do the word, you are deceived. And I'm proving to you right now out of the Bible that God said something to Adam and Eve, but Eve did not hear. She might have heard the Lord's word, but she didn't do the word of the Lord, which led to deception. So the part of the word that you don't apply is the inroad that Satan will use to deceive you. Are you with me? 
because you cannot be a quoting a Bible quoting Christian you have to be a Bible applier Christian in other words you have to apply the word of the Lord it is those that apply the word of the Lord that are doers of the word of the Lord God doesn't want to be quoted he wants the job done even the devil can quote scripture because he comes to Jesus, he says, is it not written? Even the devil quotes scripture because even the devil knows that everything that is written shall come to pass. Come on, are you with me? But Jesus rebukes the devil not based on what is written, but based on what is applied. So Satan comes, you see, because this whole thing is about worship. Satan wants worship. Why does he want worship? Because in Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28, the Bible makes it very clear that he says, I will ascend my throne above the throne of God. He wanted worship because he was made beautiful. He was made in an emerald. He had flutes. He had pipes coming out of him. So he wanted worship. He wanted his throne above God's throne. And so he has this heart of wanting worship because whatever you worship, you become like. Are you with me? That's why the last move that we are already in will be a movement of the Holy Spirit. It will be a movement of worship. It will be a movement of sons and daughters that are hungry and thirsty for God. And we will upset the status quo through the way we worship and through the way we are anointed in this hour, not negotiating the word of the Lord, but applying the word of the Lord as it is. Come on, can I have an amen or something for that? You see, you have to see something here about the snake. You have to understand something here that happens. It's the serpent comes to Eve. He starts, to neg- he starts to talk with the Eve. He starts to talk with Eve. And he starts to quote the scriptures. Or he starts to negotiate with her. By the way, Eve had no business actually talking to the snake. She should have stopped the discussion before it started. Which tells us something. One of the first steps into deception is you starting to discuss the Word of God. No, apply the Word of the Lord. Come on, are you guys okay? And so now that, now that Satan is busy seeing, but wait, 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 Eve doesn't know the Scriptures. She's not applying the Scriptures. So let me take it a little bit further. And he then says to Eve, you see, because here's the problem. Eve is not, she's misquoting the scriptures. And because she's misquoting the scripture, Satan sees a gap and now he adds to the scriptures. And he adds and he says this, God knows that if you eat of the tree, you will not surely die. But the day you eat of it, you'll become like God. So now he adds. He says, no, 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 you will not die. That's a lie. He says, in actual fact, God knows if you eat of it, you will become like God. Are you there? But where did deception, come on church, are you guys okay? Where did deception start? It started very simply with Eve not understanding and applying the word of God. She's misquoting it. And because she's not applying the word of the Lord, because she's misquoting scripture, Satan sees a gap. He comes in through the doorway of where Eve are not following the commandments of the Lord. This shows us something. Satan can only truly attack you if you are not applying the word of the Lord. Come on, guys. Are are you there? I want to take you somewhere with this this morning. And so the Bible makes it very clear, and I want you to see this. And you need to shout and be very rejoiceful because Jesus came. Now Eve goes to Adam, and she gives Adam of the fruit as well. Adam eats of it, and the effects of his disobedience is immediate. He dies spiritually. And God, the Father, comes walking into the garden. You see... When Eve was, when Eve was, listen to me very carefully. When Eve was talking to the snake, God is not showing up. When Adam takes of that apple, God shows up. Why? Because God gave the commandment to Adam. It was Adam's responsibility to teach his wife. 
Come on. But now God comes into the garden and God asks a question. He says, Adam, where are you? And the Bible says, Adam says this. He says, I was naked, I was afraid, and I hid myself. And God says something very, very peculiar. God says, whose voice did you listen to? In other words, why have you shifted kingdoms? Because another voice will lead you to another king. Then the Bible says the following. That, and I want to give you, save me revelation. No, no, no. Come on in power. What's going on this morning? Save me revelation. Listen, I'll make you stand and shout stuff in this church. Because I'm not here to raise up teensy weensy yellow dot bikini Christians. We are here to raise up an army that can worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That can cast out devils. That can heal the sick. Come on. I'm not here to fit into the world. I'm sorry. The Bible says I'm an alien. I'm not part of this thing. I'm here. I'm sent by God. I'm a purpose sent to the earth. He clothed me in a body. 1982, 0-2, He made me born. I'm a purpose walking on the planet in obedience to my God. Come on, church. Come on. Where's the sons and the daughters that are excited about God? We understand that we are a stronghold, man. That's why you can expect in this church, we will challenge every devil that might there be in your life. So God says to, are you okay in power? God says, He says, whose voice have you listened to? Who did you listen to? Naked, I'm afraid I hid myself. Naked, afraid, hid myself. Whose voice did you listen to? And I want you to see something. Adam and Eve takes on the serpent nature. How? Because the word Satan, as I said to you, is not a name. It is a something he does. He accuses. And so now Eve says, the snake made me do it. Adam says, Eve made me do it. Right there, when they disobey God, their nature changes. They now have the nature of the serpent because they've been disobedient to the Word of God. Come on, are you catching what I'm saying? Accusation is the nature of Satan because Satan is so prideful that he even accuses God. He says, no, God knows if you eat of the tree of good and evil, you will not die. That's an accusation. He's accusing God's character of being deceptive. He says, but if you eat of it, you'll become like God. Who wanted to be like God? Him. So how does he trick man to become like him? He tricks man to disobey the word of the Lord. And how did he come to negotiate the word of the Lord? Very simple. He came to test Eve. Do you know the word? Did God say? And Eve says, no, God didn't say I'll die. God said I mustn't touch it. No, God didn't say you mustn't touch it. God said you cannot eat of it. So Eve is misquoting the Bible completely. Come on, are you with me? The greatest danger in 2022 is when we have a little bit of the word. And not enough of the word of the Lord inside of us. Because there's two things that goes together. It is the word and the voice of God. You see, God already, please listen to me in power. God gave his word already to Adam and Eve. His word was subdue, have dominion, multiply. Are you guys okay? That was his word. That was his word that he gave. They knew God, not just based on His Word, but they also knew Him by His voice. Because only God sounds like God. And so Adam and Eve, to make it practical, Adam and Eve has the Word. Not this Word, but they had a Word. Are you there? That tells you something about God. God never intended actually 
Now maybe I mustn't say all this. I'll just get you all. Dear Makar. God gives them the word. Satan comes and he tests the word. He says, no, God did not say that if you eat of it, you will die. God, because surely you will not die. You'll become like God. Now Eve sees the tree and the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, all of those three dimensions kicks in. She sees that the fruit is good to eat. She takes of it. She's disobedient. Come on, I can't sugarcoat it. She takes it to her husband. She says, eat of it. Adam should have stopped Eve right there. Because he also had the word of God. But he doesn't stop her. And now, because he doesn't stop, neither does Adam nor Eve nor Satan repent to God because you find that in the scripture none of them repent none of them repent it is the Lord that then covers them because God because let me say it like this God and I, I, I don't I, I just want to go but I don't want to go too deep in this stuff because I'm going to confuse some of you if you don't hear it well God placed Adam and Eve in the garden where he had a relationship with Adam and Eve. He was walking with them. He was talking to them. E Eden was a place that God was in a, in, in a relationship, a place where God was in relationship with them. But now because Adam and Eve disobeys God, God needs to send them out of the garden. But He doesn't send them out naked. He becomes the first high priest. He slaughters an animal. He takes the skin because he understands that Adam and Eve cannot walk out of here naked. He cuts a covenant. It's called the Adamic covenant. Telling us that there will come another one that will shed his blood. That's why God is not just the first high priest. God is also the first prophet. Because God says in Genesis chapter 3, 26, God says this. He says, and he will bite your heel and you will crush his head. What was God prophesying about? God was prophesying about the time that the sun would come. And the sun will hang on the cross. You see, oh, no, no, no. Uh, you have to understand, where, was the, where, where did Lucifer sin? The Bible says before the foundations of the world, the Lamb of God was slain, right? Now let me stretch you this morning. There was blood in heaven before there was blood on the earth. So when the sun came to be slaughtered on the earth, there was already a slaughter that happened in the heavens because the Lamb was slain before the foundation of the earth. In other words, the heavens was already cleansed before He came to do it on the earth. Because what can, what is on earth must be the same as what is in heaven. Oh, you're not getting it. I'm here to tell you this morning that if Jesus didn't come, all of us will be condemned. All of us fall short of the glory of God. I want you to hear something this morning. Listen to, save me, listen. Adam and Eve left the garden. Why, why, did they, why did they say we are naked and we are afraid and we, we hid ourselves? Why did they say we are naked? Have you ever asked yourself the question, why were they naked? Because when they were with God, they were covered by His glory. So when they fell, they fell from the glory. Quickly put up the scripture. Romans chapter 3 verse number 23 says this. All men fall short of the glory of God. But as the waters covers the sea, so the glory of the Lord will fill the earth again. How? Through the church, through His people being reintroduced back to Him. Now here's the thing that you have to understand about you and, and Satan that is different. 
Satan can never be restored to the glory. Oh, I don't know if I can set you. When Jesus left the tomb, did he leave his clothes behind? Yes or no? Yes. So what was he dressed in? The glory. So what do you get back through, through Jesus? You get the glory back. That's why, that's why, and I'll take you there. That's why demons want to come into people. Because when demons get into people, they feel covered again. Because, and let me prove it to you out of scripture. The demons meet Jesus at, the, at Gadara on the other side, right? And they say to him, please, do not send us out of the area. That tells us that demonic spirits operate in areas. They're structured. Then they, then they say, please send us to the pigs. Why? They will leave this house, but they still want to go to the pigs where they feel that they are covered. Once it, Jesus allows it, by the way, they go into the pigs. The pig says, no, we don't want any other foreign spirit inside of us. They commit piggy suicide. Now I wonder why in 2022, we as human beings allow demonic entities in and around us and we don't do what the pigs do. Listen, I'm here to tell you, you carry the Holy Spirit inside of you. And if you carry the Holy Spirit inside of you, you should not be shared with anything or anybody in this hour. No, no, no. I'm a house of God. I'm a temple of the Most High God. Greater is He that lives inside of me than He that lives in the world. I'm not to be shared. Are you with me? The Bible calls you a temple, man. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 to 18. 1 Corinthians 6, 18 to 19. You are a temple. The Spirit of the Lord lives inside of you. And so how does the devil come again inside of people? Very simple. He, he quotes scripture to people. How does, how does Satan get into people? It's very simple. And I'm going to lead you there this morning. It's very simple. He establishes agreement. Because the Bible says, neither give the devil a foot all Ephesians 4.27. So he, he established agreement. Because he established agreement with Eve. He says, no, God didn't say that if you eat of it, you'll die. God, you will not die. You'll become like God. Eve agrees with that statement. Because if she didn't agree... How can she then take of the fruit? Agreement with the devil leads to action. How can you commit sexual idolatry? How can you commit sexual immorality? How can you get drunk? How can you watch porn? How can you believe that you have to be and have an anxious heart or depressed spirit? How can you believe that homosexuality is, is fine by God. How can you believe that I can have a wife and sleep around with another one? How can you believe that I can have a husband and sleep around with another one? How can you believe I can have a wife and have a girlfriend? How can you believe I can have a husband and a boyfriend? How can you believe that I, it's not important for me to be in the house of God? How can you believe any of these things unless you have found yourself in a place of agreement? Come on. So you see, for you to, to be deceived, you must agree. You must think it's okay. Now let me say to you, sexual immorality, you'll split hell open when you die. Sexual obscurity, you'll go to hell. Drunkenness, hell. Unrepented anger, hell. Offense, hell. Unforgiveness, hell. I am a holy God. My people should be holy people. You see, the problem is this. We look too much to the world. We say, oh, they find it, in it, they find it okay. No, no, no. Just because they say it's okay, it's not okay. Come 
on, say of your past, it's true. Say, prophet, it's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. Now listen to this. When you shift, I want to I wanna save me root. No, 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 save me root. I want to show you what is the root, one of the first roots of deception. Save me root. No, 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 come on in power. What's going on this morning? Save me root. One of the roots of the devil, the root of deception is this. Listen to me carefully. Listen to what Adam says. It's scriptural. The woman you gave me, she gave me the fruit from the tree and I ate it. In other words, what is Adam doing? He is shifting the blame and he's shifting responsibility. Oh, the Spirit of the Lord's here. Cornei, please come back. The Spirit of the Lord's here. He shifts the blame. He shifts the responsibility. How many people of God are not sitting in churches all across the world? They're shifting the blame. They're shifting the responsibility. People that have shifted the blame and have shifted the responsibility have become the first sign of a person that have shifted power. Have shifted power, listen to me carefully, or deceived. So Adam says, the woman you gave me made me do it. Many people sit in churches that say the offense made me do it. The hurt made me do it. No, you don't know what I went through. What I went through, my past made me act like I am. The, all the people that betrayed me made me bitter. It sounds like Adam. No, 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 no. Nobody can make you do nothing. You choose to do something. You choose to do the will of the Lord. It is a, w- say of me, I choose. As sons and daughters, you have to understand you have a choice. If God didn't make you a, a, give you a world, you wouldn't have have a choice, but you have a choice. You can choose to become like your past. You can choose to become like the betrayal. You can choose to negotiate your soul. You can choose to break up your house. You can choose it. But if you don't want to choose it, you don't have to choose it. You can choose life. And you can say this morning, where do you get it from? Jesus, the Father said it very clearly. He said, I give before you life and death. Choose life. Come on in power. Now I want you to give Jesus. I'm going to tell you why you should give Jesus all the praise right now. Jesus comes into the scene. Oh my God. A city. The devil doesn't know where he's at. Because the Father has not yet spoken comes at the age of 30 gets baptized he comes out of the water God splits the heavens open the cry of Isaiah gets heard because God's Isaiah the prophet said Lord rent the heavens let your spirit descend Isaiah 6 verse number 4 the son comes out of that water in obedience to the father the father splits the heavens open between Malachi and Matthew by the way is 400 years of silence why 400 years of silence because there's 400 years of silence where the children of God was in the wilderness but there was also 400 years that they were in Egypt what gets you out of your Egypt what gets you out of your wilderness the voice of God God splits the heavens open he says this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased God says something about Jesus the Spirit of the Lord descends it comes upon the Lord the next guy that's on the scene is who the devil and the devil says if you are what is he why is he saying if you are because he's trying to get Jesus to, to show that he is the son outside of the father telling Jesus to actually do something Because the Bible says Jesus did nothing and said nothing unless he saw and unless he heard. Then Satan quotes scripture. 
He says, it is written. He takes Jesus onto the pinnacle of the, of the temple. He says, all the kingdoms of this world has been given to me. I will give it to you. When did he get it? He got it from Adam. He says, all the kingdom of the whole world I'll give it to you if you bow down and worship me. He's quoting scripture. Then he says this, then he quotes another scripture. He says, throw yourself down from here because it is written. He quotes the book of Psalms. Just because you could quote it doesn't mean you're living it. And Jesus, listen to Jesus' response. And this is how we should respond. And I, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to show you something just now. Because I want you to, it, I, in this message, it needs to be engraved into your, into your heart and your spirit today. The Bible says that Jesus says, he, he, the, he says, if you bow down and worship me, Jesus also goes to the scripture. And he says, you will worship the Lord your God. And him only in other words Jesus is not quoting scripture he's applying scripture where did I start off with James 1 22 I said to you don't be hearers of the word do what the Bible says so if the Bible says don't do it then don't do it are you guys with me we cannot negotiate the Bible we cannot negotiate the scriptures. We cannot negotiate what the Bible says. Oh, come on, do I have somebody here today that is as I am passionate about the word of the law? Come on, church. Give Jesus 10 seconds of praise, please. Now listen to me. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna give you something here throw so long for me up um, so Adam loses the authority <laughs> right he loses his authority because he listens to the devil then we see God right through the Old Testament God makes covenant upon covenant upon covenant upon covenant to get his people back to him the final covenant he makes is through his own son. It's called the new covenant, which has been made in the blood of Jesus. Are you with me? Come on guys, are you, are you there? And so Jesus goes, you get the, the, his name is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the man, Christ is the anointing. So now you see the Holy Spirit living in a man. And the Bible says that Jesus emptied himself of all of his divinity. He emptied himself of all of his, uh, all of his God attributes. To be, um, to, to he emptied himself, the scripture says, he emptied himself of all of his humanity. And he clothed himself with his humanity. Now he lives as a man in obedience to God. And he's tempted by everything the Bible says. Yet he does not sin. So any temptation that you, you will ever have, Jesus had it. The Bible says he was tempted by everything, yet he didn't sin. In other words, he ne never breaks the commandment. He never breaks the scriptures. That's why in John 19, when the devil comes, Jesus makes a statement. The prince of this world is coming. Fear not. He has no agreement. Hold in me. In other words, there's nothing in me that said yes to him. Are you there? Then Jesus goes to the cross as a man filled with the Spirit of the Lord. He dies as the Son of God. I want you to see this. He dies for the sins of this world. He break because he dies for the sins of this world. He has the ability to break the power of death. Because death was present in the Garden of Eden. But death doesn't have any power until man sinned. Because what gives death power is sin. But now Jesus dies for sin. That means he takes the power of death too. So now Jesus by his blood 
has paid for the sins of man and he takes away the power of death. But now he goes a step further. He doesn't just, he doesn't just, oh, he doesn't just die for the sins of the world. He doesn't just take back the, he doesn't just remove the power of death. No, he takes back the keys of hell, hates, and the grave. Now he has ultimate authority. Because you have to understand something about Adam. Adam was given authority upon the earth. Jesus says this. Jesus says, all authority in heaven and on the earth has been given to me. Come on church, I want you to, I want you to get what I'm now saying. The highest order of Satan's kingdom is called a principality because he himself is his own king. Only Satan is king in his own kingdom. But when Jesus Christ restores you or when you get born again, the Bible calls Jesus the king of kings. Why the king of kings? Because in Christ, you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Question, who wanted to have a throne? The devil, Lucifer, who got a throne? The people of God. (laughs) He calls you the king of kings, why? He He calls himself the king of kings. Why does he call himself the king of kings? Because he is the king over what you are king over. He is the Lord of Lords. Why is the King of Kings? Because He are expressing His rulership over that that has already been ruled by you. Oh. And now I mentioned, I, I, I'm going to hasten to finish because we have other things to do this morning. I want, to, I want you to see something here. Remember I said to you that Adam blames Eve. Eve blames the snake. When man falls into deception, when they sin against God, it's interesting that the devil stops speaking. He's out of there. You don't find in your Bible that he talks again again to Adam and Eve. Why? They've already fallen. He got right what he wanted to. Stop speaking. Right? And I said to you that Adam and Eve got a new nature. They got the sinful nature. And listen to what Jesus does. Come on, guys, burn up the charts. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. What is Jesus doing? The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. So what Jesus does for you, when you believe in Jesus, He changes your nature. You don't, in Christ, you don't have a sinful nature anymore. That's why John says this in 1 John. He says it is impossible for a Christian to habitually sin, to stay in sin and say they are a son and daughter or born from God. It is impossible. Are you guys okay? I want, to, I want to end with this, that you guys can catch what I'm saying. I want you to see just the last one. That God never speaks to, to Satan again. Because when Satan was Lucifer, God spoke to him. God said to him, no, you will be not. And God stripped him away. He says, oh, Lucifer, oh, Lucifer, son of the morning. And then God speaks to him and he casts him out of heaven. So when Satan appears in the Garden of Eden, God doesn't speak to him again. God just curses him. Because his authority was already removed, so God just curses him. Are you there? So how? Application. I've given you information, I've given you revelation, and I'll journey with you on this because I know I'm giving a lot. How does the devil get an entry into your life? I set to you by agreement. I set to you by you not knowing the word of the Lord and not applying the word. 
He makes you negotiate the word. Right? But I want you, I want you to see something here. And I want to demonstrate. Um, I want you to do, understand this. Because what Satan does, he attacks your mind vehemently. And so, let's say Rechad represents a Christian, not just a normal Christian, just stand there. What the devil does, now Rechad has the word of God with him, right? Now, if Rechad doesn't read that Bible and he doesn't apply that scripture, what Satan starts to do with Rechad, he just starts to move him. The first thing he does, he'll move him out of fellowship with other believers. And he'll do it slowly because he is a strategist. So he moves him just away from church. Now, let's say Rechad has been reading the Bible daily. Now he moves Rechad away from people, but he doesn't just move Rechad, he starts to move Rechad away from the word. And now, every now and again, Rechad takes the word again and he reads it. But now Satan has got already right that Rechad is not actually fully in the word anymore. The Bible says, Jesus says, Your my food is the word of the Lord daily. Not Sundays, daily. Right? So now what the devil does, let's say Rechad has the Bible. And he has it. Now what the devil does, he comes and stands and he whispers a suggestion. And Rechad now has a choice. He can listen to the voice of Satan or he can heed to the word. Why? He has a free will. He can choose. If he listens to Satan's voice, he's going to come in the direction of the voice that speaks to him. Are you there? But if he listens to the word, he has the authority to rebuke this voice. Thank you. That's why the Bible says, quickly throw up. No, don't even worry. That's why the Bible says, take captive every thought to obedience to Christ and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. Come on, are you there, church? And I'm going to journey with you in this. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to journey with you because I'm giving you a lot of revelation. Yesterday, as I was praying, the Lord said this to me. He said, "Who shifted you without moving you? Who shifted you without moving you? Because here God comes, and I'll summarize. Here God comes walking into the garden. Adam." Adam, where are you? I'm naked. I fell from the glory. I hid myself. I'm trying to cover myself up. I am ashamed of what I did. The three conditions of sin. God says, Adam, who did you listen to? Who told you you were naked? Let me reword that a little bit that you can find it. Adam, why, why, why have you listened to another voice? I was with you, Adam, in the morning. I was with you, Adam, in the afternoon. I was with you, Adam, at night. Adam, my friend, where are you? Hear the cry of the Father. Where are you? Why have you started to sin against me? Why did you talk to the snake, Adam? Adam, God lost his friend. And the father is so gracious and merciful, he kills an animal to cover up Adam. And right from there, from that moment to right now, the father sends his son eventually. He says, one of us three must go. The father, the son, and the Holy Spirit, one of us must go because I want them back. The father sends the son and the son gets born in a woman. And Mary agrees of the Lord. 
and the son gets born and the Bible calls that Emmanuel God with us the son is now on the earth God is in a man he doesn't break his word he couldn't take in this whole world over by just one commandment again but he cannot break his word because he said I place my word above myself he cannot break it so he needs to fix this thing through a man first Adam messes it up he needs to send another Adam the last Adam his name is Jesus come on church I want you to understand something this morning that if we are people that are Christians in sitting in church and we are Christians we need to love the Lord our God how is it possible I want you to hear the voice of the Lord this morning how is it possible for Christians you see we can't scare people into right living no you need to introduce people to the goodness of God to the grace of God to the mercy of God because Christianity is not about rule keeping Christianity is about understanding that if I am who he says I am I must not sin I have got no agreement of the devil Adam there's many of you who are sitting here this morning I can prophesy to you where are you why have you tolerated sin why have you tolerated idolatry why have you tolerated sexual immorality why have you tolerated porn why have you tolerated drinking why have you tolerated to do such an evil thing against your God don't you understand that sin will straight send you straight to hell and then you can say oh but it was my circumstance no that's what Adam did no, you choose hell or you choose heaven. And I'm saying my, my heart as a, as a preacher in this hour, as, a, as, a, as your leader, my heart is bleeding for the people of the world because I'm seeing a people that have started to negotiate. No, we negotiate nothing. I'll leave of this last for... Oh. Excuse my passion. Why do we preach the word? Because we're trying to get people back to God. Are you there, church? Oh, my Lord. The sun hangs in passion. The Bible says he stays on the cross for the joy that was set before him. What was the joy? Change the tune. What was the, what was the joy? Here we sit, a full church, hundreds of people online. Why did Jesus stay? He saw you. He saw you. 2022, he saw you. Why did he stay? He saw you. He said, Father, I don't want them to go to hell. Let them have an opportunity to receive me. The Bible says, Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Can I give you an honest, honest, honest answer this morning? You know why the Lord is waiting 2,022 years still? He doesn't want men to perish. He's giving people time. He's allowing people grace. And so this morning, what I want to do, everybody online with me, everybody in the house, I've made a list for you. This list reads, a cult and false religion checklist. And what I'm going to do this morning, and the link will go out now on, on, on all of our social media platforms. Please pick, put the link out. What we are going to do, it's going to be very, very simple. Very simple. And the ushers, the volunteers, you guys need to run. There's hundreds of people here this morning. If Just put it, guys, make it easy. Put it in the, take a bundle, put it in one row and let the people just send it all down. It's easy. Let's do it like that. I'll explain to you as your, as your list comes. I have given you a list of things that gives Satan a rightful entry into your home and a rightful entry to attack you. 
And what I want you to do is, is something very, very simple. I want you as families to go and check this list. And I want you to tick this list. Are you guys, is everybody listening? I'll say it again. I want you to take this list and check this list. Tick it. And if you have been, you'll be, you'll be seeing there will be some stuff in here that you might not have, but you might have done it. Are you there? Okay, everybody's mind is with the papers now. So just get the paper out, please. Because I want, to, want you to listen to the instruction. Everybody that's online, you have to click on that. You can click on it after it's going to stay here. In actual fact, we'll pin this for you. Um, it will be in the stream, guys. It won't go away. Don't worry. spread is about 60% through okay quickly show me if you have a paper put it up in your hand do it like this okay most of you have got one now listen to me save me listen okay I want you to do the following first thing we are getting you to freedom empower I'm getting you to freedom the first step to freedom, we're going to break any agreement we have. Say amen. So what I want you to do, listen. I want you to take this list as family members. And I want you to tick it. Okay? Then, if you have anything that's on this list... I want you next week Sunday morning you bring that thing or things that you have that's on this list you bring it here to church on the outside here because I'm not gonna bring it into my building on the outside here we're gonna throw it into bins and together we together we're gonna burn it and we're going to repent towards the Lord our God. And we're going to come clean. Are you guys there? Are you with me? Come on. I thank you for that response. It blesses my heart. But I, if I just look at this. Numerology. Occult literature. Lucky charms. I don't need luck. I am favored by God. Demon worship. De deja vu curses Japanese flower stuff whatever new age movement things anything of ancestral spirits anything you bring it here I'm gonna have a bin outside and I'm gonna take you there the next week because I needed to lay the foundation today and together as the people of God we're gonna go back to our God because he's holy and we can say Lord we repent because, and here's just something that I want to say to you for, because of my heart that is so for you. Some of the things you might have done out of ignorance. Some of the things you might have not even know what you're busy doing. And I'm saying to you today, that's why you need knowledge. Because my people perish for a lack of. So this morning I'm giving you knowledge. I'm telling you what the devil can have a foothold into your life. Are you guys okay? And so before I go on of the service this morning, I want you again, here's your instructions. It's very simple. I want you to take this list. You tick it, tick, 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 tick. You bring it to church next week, Sunday. And outside here, while we're busy here, because I'm going to take you through steps of repentance next week. And while we're busy repenting, you will see on, on the screens, they're gonna, the guys are going to burn it outside. Are you there? But we make sure 
that there is no, no, but no allegiance with the devil. Come on, guys. This should, you should be very rejoiceful about what I've just said. And we want to break off every power. Are you there? It might just be that you have got sickness in your life and you don't even know why you have sickness. It might be because you have allowed an inroad. You might not even know why you are struggling the way you're struggling. It might be that there's something in your life that has caused that struggle. Yes, Holy Spirit. Why do I want to give you a physical tick list? Because everything in the spiritual world has to do with symbols. They want to see a symbol. That's why, for example, in the satanic world, there will be a lot of symbols. That's why, for example, with, um, with African spirits, you'll find people wearing things. Why? It's a touchable between this realm and in the spiritual realm. Why is the cross of Jesus Christ a visi visible cross? Because it is the cross that has made a gateway between heaven and earth. You understand? So I want us, next week Sunday we're going to go there. Is, is that okay? Come on, just say amen to that. Amen. Say thank you Lord that I have the opportunity to be free. Okay. I want us just to take a moment. Everybody quickly stand. Everybody in the church stand. Guys that are online as well, quickly just stand. Before we move on from here. I want us to take a moment with the Holy Spirit and we're going to trust God at this space. Everybody, would you lift your hands with me? I want us to become sensitive about the Holy Spirit right now. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Holy Spirit, help me that I may identify anything that's in my house that's in my life that I must part with help me Holy Spirit that I might deal with anything that might be a foothold in my life okay listen to me everybody look at me I want you to do two things for me Instruction number one, read this list and you bring it. Are you there? Outside of the church, next week there'll be two major bins. We're going to burn it. Why do we want to burn it? Because we're telling the devil, hey, we're sending all this stuff right back to hell, man. Doesn't belong in our lives. <laughs> Secondly, I want you to take time this week. I'm shifting the service now. I want you to take time this week. You write this stuff on a piece of paper that you struggle with in your own soul. You struggle with bitterness, you write it down. You struggle with unforgiveness, you write it down. You struggle with whatever, you write that down, you bring it. We're going to burn that stuff. But we're going to make a clear separation between us and our past. Aren't you happy you're in a church that loves you this much, that wants to see you free? Why do I do this? I want to see you free from any sickness, free from any disease, free from all forms of poverty, free from anything that might hinder you. I want to see you free. Why do I want to see you be free? Because He wants to set you free. Because He that the Son has set free is... Amen. Come on, let's give Him 30 seconds of praise. may be seated this morning I have the joy save me joy we well, have the joy to tell you and of all of the guys that are online with us this morning I told you last week Sunday I told you that the hand of the Lord is upon the work that we have started in Durban and this morning what I want to do, I want to play for you a video that Prophet Bill Hammond, if you ask who's Prophet Bill Hammond, 
prophet Bill Hammond is the leading prophet in the world in my opinion and he's the granddaddy of prophets we say 89 years old and right about after my mom and my dad died I met him and he gave me a word and soon after that or in that same period of time season of time Durban kind of started but I want to show you and in the word you'll hear some words and I just want to explain to you one of two things he says first and foremost he says I don't know if you've had your ziklag ziklag is when you've lost your family and it was just after I lost my family he said if you have lost your family God has moved or you have to add your ziklag you'll hear it in the prophecy I've moved you now and I'm on my way with you to to Jerusalem and then the Lord says in the in the prophetic word because in this church we believe in prophecy we don't believe in the Shandai no we believe in actual prophecy not in speculation are you there and so he said there will go a headquarters open for you and God will move with this church and you'll expand into another city and then during that time I went to the Lord and I asked the Lord what do you want from me because I've been living my whole life and all of us we've been living in obedience to God and God said to me I will give you four stars you have as with your instruction it was as clear as day he said star number one Pretoria because we are Jerusalem star number two Durban star number three Cape Town star number four PE and the Lord said get to work son and fulfill the commandments and so we got to work and the video that you'll see now is the prophetic word of him speaking about it now what's amazing about it is this and they, they, they everybody's online so Durban have your online comment <laughs> they, everybody's online there I saw a building and by the way what we're gonna do this morning is not for a man this is for the gospel this is for the harvest we want to have the harvest in right yes in power we want to see the harvest coming in and so what you'll see in this video is how the Lord has progressed and where we are now and and I'll speak to you more about that we have to be ready for the harvest because God is moving so let me play the video for you then I'm gonna explain one or two more things from from that you'll hear the voice you'll hear is of Prophet Bill Hammond and then you'll also see with your eyes what's busy happening and then I'm telling you what will move from there is that okay thank you guys Through the Davidic ministry of like David killed his lion, killed his bear, then he had the opportunity to kill the giant, and then he was in the music ministry, then he was in the captain of a thousand, and then he had his zigzag. I don't know whether you've had your zigzag experience yet, but if you have, you're getting ready for Hebron. And then Hebron, he was there seven years, and then he moved from Hebron to Jerusalem. And you're getting ready to move from Hebron to Jerusalem in your ministry, in your position is going to be a uh, actual new headquarters it's going to open up and uh, with plenty of room and space and place to be able to do fulfill the vision and accomplish the purpose of god and god says it's a step of faith and 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 that you're going to have to do like abraham did step out not knowing all the answers not knowing all the end results and like told abraham go to a place that i will show you so you're you're going to your your tendency to want to have all the everything in place before you make a move it might be your personality kind of <laughs> but God says you're going to have to step out in faith before you see all the answers or you see all the ways it can happen but God you said you take one step I'll take two for you you take one and as you keep stepping out in faith the buildings will come together the people will come together everything will come together because you've got to launch into a greater realm the Lord's releasing that promise he gave you years ago 
by that double portion and, and by that prophetic apostolic double portion anointing and miracles are going to start happening. God's going to start releasing words of knowledge about situations. You're going to speak a word of faith and people are going to get healed and you're going to start seeing miracles as easy as you prophesy. And the Lord says, it's time, it's time, it's time. You tried it before, it didn't work quite like you wanted to, but it wasn't time, but now it's time. Now what didn't work yesterday will work today. What you couldn't do before, you can do now. So the Lord says, press on in, press on in. Get that faith up. And, uh, and are you married, children? Now, well, get your wife in agreement. Four children? Three. Three, that's what I had. When you're 87 like me, you can have 11 children and 20 great-grandchildren. <laughs> but, but, uh, uh, Brother Gebhardt, it's, it's time to make the move. So over these next few months and years, you're moving from Hebron to Jerusalem, so you got to drive out the Jebusites, read that story over again, and you're going to get a captain that'll go up the water gate and open the door. And, and there are, there's several things going to come together to make this happen. But it's going to happen line by line. It's like you're not going to be able to see the whole plan. You'd like to make the whole plan, get it all figured out, then do it. No, you're going to do it as you go. And David had to go, not knowing how he's going to drive out the Gibby sites, but if believing God, how he's going to take the city, but he did it. So this is your day to move ahead and move. And you're, you and your wife will be in agreement when, you, when you're fighting. You weren't in agreement before when you went to it, but fully. So now she's going to feel it as strong as you do. And, and you all pray together and agree together. Even the children will have words of knowledge and, and sense of things and we won't move as a family and get the job done. Amen. God bless you. see I'm standing in our very own building can you believe it yes it's still a construction site but soon it's going to be kitted out five star and it's going to be a place called home I cannot believe that God has been so faithful that he took us from a house into our very own building in just a couple of months I want to stand here and say to all of you thank you very much for every single person that contributed not just financially in sowing into the vision of empower but also through your prayer and in believing in the call. Prophet, Pastor Shannon, our spiritual parents, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for believing in the call of God. Thank you for trusting us with this call, with your vision, to carry in power further than it's ever gone before. I know it's just a matter of time before the entire city of Durban will belong to Jesus. And power is not just a name, it is a calling, soon to be known throughout the nations of South Africa and the world, not just local, but international. I cannot wait. I'm so grateful. Thank you once again. On the 27th of August will be the grand opening of Durban. Stay tuned. Watch everything online. Watch the space. It's going to be incredible. God bless you all. Thank you so much once again. Prophet, Pastor Shannon, we love you. We love you dearly. We honor you. And this would not be possible without you and every single person that's part of the family called Empower Church. We love you. So what we'll do this morning is, what I want to ask, can everybody quickly stand just for me, just for a moment. I want to speak to the family, and as we are together this morning, it's very, very simple. I want you just to put a scripture up for me quickly. I'll tell you now. Uh, Genesis chapter number 8 and verse number 22, please. Genesis chapter number 8 and verse number 22. While the earth remains, the seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. I want you to see there, go back. It's so while the earth remains, seed time and harvest time will remain. I want you to see something. Seed time will remain. Bible says what you sow, you will reap. And so this morning, some of you are going to sow, and I'm trusting the Lord that in this day, that and with all of our guys online in Durban and Cape Town and Secunda, everybody that's online, 
that this morning we're going to sow to get that work of the Lord established. Are you there in power? And we are sowing towards souls. We are sowing towards the harvest. We are sowing towards the gospel. I want to make it very clear. Your sowing today will unleash the harvest that needs to happen in Durban, right? Because on the 27th of August, we are opening Empower Church Durban. And some of you will give a thousand today, some of you will give 10,000, some of you will get a hundred thousand. Doesn't matter. What matters is that we put seed in the ground. Are you there? God believed in the world so much that He gave a seed. His name is Jesus. And because of His seed, Jesus, the whole world got saved. So a seed is something you put in the ground to have an effect against the harvest. Are you there? And I'm trusting the Lord in this day that right now that the Spirit of the Lord will already work in your hearts so that we as the Jerusalem, we as the mother church can put seed into the ground for the harvest that is in Durban. Are you there? The building we have gotten is 570 squares out by the grace and the mercy of God. There's certain sizes and there's other people watching me so I won't tell you exactly how much. But I can tell you it's big enough to start with what God is wanting to do. And it's actually a very nice facility. But we can't do it without the generosity and the seed of God's people. Are you there? And so here at Empower Church, I've taught you for long. I've taught you about the generosity. About a God that loves you and that is generous. And so this morning, I want us to put seed into the ground. Is that okay? And again I say, there are some of you, you're going, going to give a thousand. Some of you are going to give ten thousand. Some of you are going to give a hundred thousand. But today... We're going to sow into the heavenly vision that God wants souls. And the first star is given is Durban. Everything is by commandments of the Lord. Amen. So I want you to lift your hands this morning as we, because I need all of you to agree with me for the harvest that the word of the Lord has commanded. Come on church, are you there? So in this building right now, Father, I pray that you will speak to every soul that's in this place. That Father, that in the seeds that are given and sown in this church in this morning, and everybody that watches me by online, Father, thank you that it is more than sufficient to not just establish the church, but also the full headquarter vision that we have for Durban. In Jesus' name. I want you to pray a prayer if you, in this building. Save me, Heavenly Father, and everybody online. Heavenly Father, I agree with the vision of the harvest to gain souls into the kingdom. And Father, this morning, I am sowing a seed into the harvest in Jesus' name. Father, take my seed and open up the harvest for Jesus' sake. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. So, you can give Jesus a praise offering. So what I want us to do right now is I want us to go and sow seeds. Some of us, as I said, will give a thousand, some ten, some a hundred. But let's get the job done in power so that we can do what the Lord has called us to do. Can you go and sow your seeds this morning? Thank you so much. Why don't you come here to the front? You can sow. There at the back you can sow. There at the back you can sow. Here in the front you can sow. But let's come and sow our seeds. Let's come and sow our seeds.
wants us to just there we are. I want you to stand, please. See, there's many people still giving. It's all good. I want you just to lift your hands just for a moment, please. What we are doing in this church is holy. We are agreeing with God for for bigger things. Amen. As everybody is standing right now, I need you in this moment to release faith with me. Because the Bible says God only moves by faith. And I'm saying that because I want us just for a moment before I'm asking Pastor Stephen to come, I, I want us just for a moment because I'm shifting you to two places. One, on the 4th of September, we will go to three services. We'll do 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and 5 o'clock here in Pretoria. Why are we doing this? Quickly look around, please. Do you see any more space? No, the church is full, right? So we are moving to the 8 o'clock, the 10 o'clock, and the 5 o'clock on the 4th of September. Amen? So I want you to tell people that and tell yourself, 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 5 o'clock from the 4th of September. And the reason why we are doing it, we want to make room for the harvest to come in. Right? So I want you again, please lift your hands. I want us to agree together this morning because I need you to trust God with me. The Bible says we are co-laborers with Christ. So let's pray together. Father, I want to pray right now with our people. Father, we want to trust you for the harvest right now in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you that as we move this church from an 8 o'clock to a 10 o'clock and a 5 o'clock back to three services, that we will see the harvest coming in. Say with me, Father, release the people from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. Remove the people and move them into the church. Father, we agree with you that the hour has come for the harvest to be released. Father, send the people by your Spirit in Jesus' name. Now, just last thing from my side. If each of you bring one person, we have three services that are full. Are you with me? So again, I say on the 4th of September, we're going to move to 8 to 10 to 5. And each of you bring one. One person. One person. And we have a problem already. Are you guys okay? Can we trust Jesus for this? Come on, Pretoria. So what are you busy seeing? You are seeing this church. We are stepping out in faith. We are stepping out in faith in Durban and we're stepping out in faith in Pretoria simultaneously. Amen. Again, I want to say as Pastor Stephen comes out, I, I want to just say, please make sure you go as family. Husbands, wave, the, wave at me. Husbands, wave at me. Husbands, wave at me. Husbands, wave. Thank you. Husbands, wives, wave at me. Moms, wave at me. Okay. What I want you to do again, I say, take this form, fill it in, and you bring the stuff here to church, right? Next week, we break the allegiance. I'll take you there. And we shift all of this stuff out of our lives. I can tell you this will be the fruit. There will be a freedom that will come into your life that you have never had. Or might, or might have never experienced to this dimension. Why? We are turning our backs on the things of the world. And we are stepping one step closer to who God made us to be. So Father, I want to just say to pray lastly, Lord. Father, I want to pray that every single person in this place in this morning. And every single person that is online. Father, we are serious about you, God serious about you and father i thank you that we have the opportunity to launch durban on the 27th of august 28th of august 
I thank you, Lord, that we have the pleasure to enlarge the space for more people on the 4th of September here in Pretoria. And I thank you, Lord, that we have the opportunity this morning to literally go through a list and break any form of allegiance with the evil one. Lord, to you be all the glory, all the praise, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. Come on, let's give Jesus Christ just some praise this morning. Tell somebody this morning, Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Come on, 10 seconds of praise just once again. Lastly, I forgot to say that the Holy Spirit reminds me. I'm going to take the whole church. We're going to go into a season of prayer. Is that fine? So if you are not on, a, on, on a, the church's WhatsApps and Telegram links, please make sure you go to the connection corner and get connected. And you'll find me Tuesday morning. I'm going to pray 7 to 8. I want you to come and pray with me. We'll pray online. Then Tuesday evening, come and pray here. Are you there? Come to church. Let's pray. Wednesday morning, we I'll again pray with you all. We pray live, 7 to 8. Come on, it's an hour. Shift your day. Tell your boss, listen, I have an appointment of God. Thursday, 7 to 8, we pray together. Friday, 7 to 8, we pray together. Why do we want to pray? Simple. God does everything if a man prays. Come on, are you there? Come on, let's give Jesus just one more praise offering. Amen and amen. Don't you just love the Lord? Yes, we do. Maybe just that, um, to, to, to mention, if you are visiting us here for the first time and maybe you walked, you just heard of the church and I'm going to be very brief. You're welcome just to be seated before we go out. And um, you would like to find out more about this, what this church is doing, even if you're watching us online. Uh, Please send us a, a message if you are watching online. Don't just comment there. Maybe we'll miss it. But if you're inside the church building, you can please go over to the to the connect, connect corner. You'll find Pastor Milani there, and um, just just get more details. If you if you are not in terms of any communication you don't receive from the church, please please just go there, and we would love to make contact with you, and um, make sure that you are connected to what the Lord is busy doing in this church. Also, if you are on your way there and you're not connected to a life group as yet, please also just, just get yourself connected. Be involved in, in what this church is doing, not because we want to run programs, but because what, what of, of the words of Jesus that says that we should make disciples of all men. That is my and your responsibility. It's not just the people who work at church who make disciples. No, it's disciples who make disciples. Okay, if you said amen, then you... I assume that you are connected already. Then in terms of uh, for this coming, uh, this, this Tuesday, you heard already that we are praying again inside the building. Please make effort before EBI, obviously EBI is kicking off at 7.30, but from 6 to 7, please come and join us inside the church to pray. Okay, thank you just for three excited, four excited people. Okay. See, this is the season where the Bible says that if my people who are called by my name, are you called by God's name? If you humble yourself and what? Pray. Pray. This is what we should do as a church family together. We should be praying. Then lastly from our side is that um, if you haven't received and uh, the list that was handed out this morning and obviously you can see the link that was that's that you can find on on, uh, on our media platforms but inside our foyer on that side is a list uh, they printed more lists so please just make yourself uh, make your way over there and um, inside the foyer you can get more uh, more of these lists and please remember to bring them with next week even if you have to make a permanent marker cross on your hand please don't do that but 
Um, we are way past that, so now you can just set reminders on your phone. So much easier. But please bring it with, uh, as Pastor Gebert mentioned this morning, and uh, it's going to be a glorious day of freedom next week, as we're already, we started off today. Then uh, final just thing from my side is that please do not miss tonight's evening service. Uh, tonight we've got uh, Pastor Brenton Goldman that's going to be preaching here tonight. He's a friend and a family to this to this uh, local church. And um, if you might know him from also from his dad, Apostle uh, Neville Goldman. It's his son. So he's going to be preaching here tonight. And we are going to have a glorious time together as a church family. So I'm going to really ask all the men, please bring your family. Please bring your family. People say, no, it's cold and tomorrow is school. Well, today is Sunday and it's... It's a day that we dedicate for families to the Lord together. We do that as a community of believers. And the beauty of that is we can do that together. So amen. Won't you please stand with us as we end off our time together until 5 p.m. tonight. And I ask the worship team to stand up a little bit closer and we go out with a, with a song of celebration. Man, the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. He is good. He is better than what you can ever think or ask or imagine. So, Father, thank you that in this morning, Lord, that we can say thank you for Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you've called us by your name. Thank you that you've written our names as soon as we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. You wrote our name in the Lamb's book of life. And therefore, we, we will not perish, but we will have eternal life with you and father we want to pray lord that every form of of things that weigh every believer down will be broken off in jesus name thank you lord that where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom we are temples of the holy spirit therefore we walk in freedom we pray lord that this church family will be blessed and you'll take us from strength to strength from glory to glory Lord we love you Abba we love you Holy Spirit we pray that we would be aware of you in Jesus name Amen and Amen bless you. May you have an awesome, awesome Sunday and we'll see you all at 5pm as we go out with a song.